So if you ever found yourself stranded somewhere before because your vehicle wouldn't start up due to your battery being dead or just not working, well, what if I told you there are some very simple things that a lot of people don't realize they should be looking out for and visually inspecting? There are also some tests that can be very easily done without taking your battery somewhere to have somebody either possibly tell you the truth or just try to sell you a battery. And by knowing how to do these tests and knowing what to look out for, you can get ahead of the problem and stop it from ever happening. So I'm gonna show you all that so you can make sure that you don't find yourself or a family member stranded again. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so just to go over some of the things that you just wanna kind of visually look for. So this is the battery in one of my trucks here. Obviously we've got the positive side over here and the negative side is over there. Now, just visually, things that we'd wanna be looking for are things like corrosion. If you see any kind of corrosion going on on your terminals or around the posts on your battery, then you're definitely gonna to wanna to take care of that before it gets too bad to where it's causing you an issue. Or if you're finding that your vehicle's not starting or your boat or your gate opener's not working, then the corrosion may already be really bad. But the good news is, if it is just due to corrosion, you can clearly see when corrosion is present. Thankfully, I don't have any here on this battery. But if you do find that you do have corrosion, a good idea would be to take these wires off of the battery like you're disconnecting it. And then you can use a mixture of baking soda and water or isopropyl alcohol and use a wire brush or even a toothbrush and get all of that corrosion off of your terminals and your connectors. Now, typically, if you find you have a lot of corrosion, there's a good chance your battery is fairly old and it might be on its way out anyways. So a good idea is anytime you replace your battery, you wanna mark it somehow so you know exactly when this battery was replaced. For instance, where I get my batteries from, they put these stickers on here. And you can see where this one says 1022 and then K22. In this case, I wanna pay attention to the K22 and it's the number in the alphabet as far as what the month is and then the 22 is the year. So I had this battery installed in November of 2022. So if you live somewhere that's warm like I do down in the south, you can typically expect to get around two-ish years out of a battery just because of the environment here, how hot and humid it is, they just tend to wear down a little bit faster. If you're in more of a northern state, you may be able to get somewhere around three to four years out of your battery. Now for the next thing you can just kind of look out for, and it could be causing you issues, maybe it sounds like your vehicle is going to start, or maybe it just starts every once in a while and then sometimes it doesn't, and it's not that the battery is dead, then you really want to check your connectors here to the post on your battery. If they're loose, then you're probably getting an intermittent connection, and that's why you're gonna experience some of those issues. Now, this isn't a super common issue, but it is one that comes up. So while you're visually inspecting for any kinds of corrosion or leakage anywhere on your battery, it's also a good time to just put your hands on those connectors, try to wiggle them a little bit, and see if there's any play with it. If there is, then obviously they need to be tightened down. All right, so this next thing we're gonna talk about is gonna come down to our battery's health. Now, some of the symptoms that your battery might be displaying can be either acute or they can be chronic. And we'll get into the chronic ones a little bit later and how to look out for those. But for the acute ones, pretty much all of us have been there before where we have gone to start up our vehicle and it just won't start. Sometimes it'll appear that it's completely dead, won't make any noise whatsoever. You might not even get lights coming on. Your battery is severely depleted or somebody just left the lights on overnight in the vehicle. They didn't turn off. It depleted the battery far enough to where it might try to turn, but it won't actually turn the engine over. So many people are carrying around those big bulky cables still. So if you're one of those people that's just carrying around one of those cables, I highly recommend that you check out a battery jumper like this one here. I've got one of these in each one of my vehicles just in case I'm somewhere and I can't get my vehicle to start. And also if I'm not out with my wife, she has a way of getting her vehicle started very easily without having to try and involve somebody else. They're very easy to use. They really don't cost a lot more than your typical jumper cables. So while this isn't necessarily a thing to look out for or a way to fix your battery, I guess this is more of a public service announcement that if you don't have one of these, I definitely recommend that you look into getting one because not only can they get you or a family member out of a jam and don't have to involve anybody else, or carry around those big bulky cables, but when you're not using it, it can really give you some peace of mind knowing that you have it. All right, so as you can see here, I've got a deep cycle marine battery here. This is the battery that I've actually been using to power my gate opener for my driveway. Now this battery says J23. That means that I replaced this battery in October of 2023. So this battery is not even a year old. We're right at 10 months. But I've been having issues with my gate opener for probably around the last five months. And because this battery is so new, 
I've been blaming it on the solar panel, the gate opener itself, but today we're gonna test this thing out, see what condition it's actually in, and we're gonna go over some of those symptoms that present with a chronic battery issue. So one thing that you always wanna do, and this is also a visual inspection that can be done, is you kinda just wanna feel along the battery on the sides, or anything that just doesn't look right. They should be just flat sides all the way around. If you are noticing that there's any kind of bulging on the case, that can oftentimes indicate that there's some overcharging that's going on. But if you find that you have cracking on your case, a lot of times that comes from freezing or some sort of damage from impact to the battery. But you definitely wanna be careful in case there is any damage to the battery because it could possibly leak acid and that's obviously a very serious safety hazard. Now, another thing that we wanna pay close attention to with these, and this isn't just when you're having issues with your battery. This is something that everybody should be doing on a somewhat regular basis, whether it's your car battery, boat battery, UTV or gate battery, whatever it is, there's a maintenance item that oftentimes gets overlooked by the majority of people. And I think it's because they don't realize that there's any type of maintenance to be done to a battery. And that comes down to the water levels. Yes, there is water inside of your bigger batteries like this. And it's more than just water, it's water and sulfuric acid. And this is an electrolyte that allows the chemical reactions that generate electricity to occur. But the water also protects the battery's active materials, which are lead plates, while it generates that power. So if you don't have a sufficient water level in your batteries, the active material would start to oxidize and it would cause the battery to lose power. So the key component is to make sure that that water level is high enough that it's able to cover the lead plates inside of the battery to help prevent damage and to ensure that it's functioning properly. And so if you don't know about this and you definitely don't know where to check and that is up here on top of the battery These two plastic pieces right here are covers now before you go and start just taking the tops off your batteries to check the water levels You want to make sure that you do so safely So it would be recommended to wear some sort of gloves to protect your skin But more importantly make sure you're wearing some sort of eye protection because you want to make sure that this does not splash up and get in your eyes Then I just typically take a slotted or flat headed screwdriver and just gradually pry up all the way around that cap. And I try to do so easily so it doesn't just pop up and then possibly risk getting splashed a little bit. So once that's up all the way, then it can just be removed. Same thing for the second one, just gradually pry up all the sides to it. And I like to, again, put my hand on top of it to make sure that it doesn't just pop up. And so this is then when you'd wanna be looking down in each one of those holes. Unfortunately, it's hard for you to see the actual water levels, but you'll see those plates down inside of these holes and then be able to tell whether or not your water levels are high enough to where they're covering those plates. In this case, my water levels are not up all the way, but they are easily covering all of those plates. And so it's not a water level issue in this case that is causing the problem. But if you've already got these off and you notice it is a little bit low, it's very easy to top off with some distilled water. And then of course, once we're done looking at the water levels and possibly filling them back up, we wanna make sure that we put the covers back on. All right, so now let's get into, if you're having issues, what is probably the most likely reasons, and then also how to find out what those reasons are. Well, don't do what I did and just waste a bunch of time working on the gate opener or the vehicle or whatever it may be. The first place we should always look is the battery. And this is a perfect example of how a battery that is not very old can still be bad. And I'll show you just how easy it is to figure out whether your battery is good or not. So one test that can be done is using a multi meter. So I'm going to turn my multimeter on to voltage. So I'm going to go ahead, switch it over to DC, make sure I have it on the correct setting. And so now that I've got that all set up, now I can take my probes. I can take one probe, put it on the positive side, take the other probe, put it on the negative side. And as you can see, we're getting 12.8 volts. So 12.8 volts is actually very good. You really wanna have a voltage reading of anything of 12.6 volts or higher. And that's gonna let you know that your battery is fully charged and it is at least with this test telling us that there isn't necessarily anything wrong. Just for reference, if it's below 12.6 and say it's like 12.2 to 12.4, then that's gonna indicate that it's kind of a partially charged battery. And then anything below 12.2 is gonna tell you that your battery is discharged or it could be a failing battery. But here's the issue here. I've done this test. You see I'm getting 12.8 volts. So it's showing that I have great voltage for this battery. It's fully charged. And since it's not below 12.2 volts, then at least some of the time I should have a good battery here. 
However, I can tell you for sure that I know that this battery is bad. And if you take your battery to a battery store, a lot of times they're gonna test it for you, but they're not gonna be checking for voltage. They're gonna be checking it under load and they're gonna be checking the cold cranking amps to see what your battery is actually capable of, what its actual health is. Voltage alone just is not a great indicator of whether or not your battery is in good or bad condition. So I'm really not gonna be able to put this to the test using my multimeter here. So how do we find find out whether this battery is actually good or bad. Well, again, it's gonna come down to using the correct tool. And I was actually in the dark about this for quite a while. I always knew that when I took my batteries to my battery guy, that he would always put it on his giant tester and check all the cold cranking amps and see what the actual health was. But you don't need that giant tester. What you can get instead is a device like this right here. This looks like an OBD2 scanner that people use to check their check engine lights. But this one is specifically made to check batteries. So so very simple, we've got our two clamps, our positive side, our negative side. Usually your battery is gonna be marked the same, red for your positive, black for your negative. If not, there's gonna at least be a symbol on each side, positive and negative. So we're just gonna take the red clamp, put it on the positive side of the battery, take the black clamp, put it on the negative side of the battery. And then as soon as those are connected, the battery tester will power up. We just have to hit enter. As you can see, we've got a bunch of different functions that we can check for, battery test, cranking test, charging test, and then you can review all of the data of what this has read. So what we're gonna select on this case is a battery test to see what condition it's in. You need to know what kind of battery you have. Typically, it's not gonna be listed on the battery itself. It may take a Google search, looking up the part number and the manufacturer. In this case, I know mine is an AGM flat plate, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And the first option is CCA, which is cold cranking amp. This is what you want. You want something that can test your cold cranking amperage. And this is really one of the only things the battery guys are checking as well. So we'll go ahead, hit enter. Now we need to select how many cold cranking amps our battery is capable of. If you don't know how many cold cranking amps your battery is capable of, a lot of times you can just look at the label and right there it says CCA 550. So this battery at 100% has 550 cold cranking amps. So I wanna go ahead, set my setting to 550 cold cranking amps. Once I have it to the proper amount of cold cranking amps, I just hit enter and it's gonna start the test. And it won't take very long to give us the results. All right, so as you can see, we've got a lot of data here. One of the first things you're gonna see is this bulb light up over here and it's underneath of bad. So that's just kind of an overview of what condition the battery is in. It also says that it needs to be replaced down here at the bottom of the screen. And then if you look at everything that it read, this battery is fully charged. So again, we were getting that nice voltage reading with the multimeter. It's showing that it has 12.64 volts. And so the issue with this battery is not because it's been discharged. The issue with this battery comes down to right here. We should be getting up around 550 cold cranking amps and we're only getting 130 so health-wise, this is only at 6% of what its capacity should be. So that is why, in my case, my gate is just refusing to work. I can barely get it to turn on. If this type of health was in a vehicle or a boat or a side-by-side, -side, whatever it is, your vehicle would pretty much have zero shot of actually starting up because the battery just cannot supply the amperage that is required to get those items or vehicles started. And so in this case, I was having an issue with my battery, and so that's why I used my tester but in all reality having a tester like this in my opinion is very important because it should be something that is done regularly that way you're getting ahead of any potential problems you can see the health of your battery if you're starting to see that it's deteriorating down it might be a good idea to just go ahead even though it's still working just go ahead and get that battery replaced especially if you're seeing that your health percentage or cold cranking amps are below 70 or maybe even 80 percent but definitely 70 percent it's time to start looking at having that battery replaced. So in my opinion, for the DIYer, something like this is a must. This particular one is made by Top Don. This is not a sponsored video. This was not sent to me for free. This is a tool that not only did I want it, but I feel like it's almost a need and for all the reasons that I've already listed. So that's just my personal opinion but it's totally up to you. But for your convenience, like always, I'll have links for 
this along with all the other tools like the multimeter and the jump pack. I'll have links for everything you saw in this video down in the description down below. When you click on those links, it will take you directly to whatever you clicked on so you can check all of this out for yourself. Now, just really quickly, if you found value in this video, then you'll definitely find value in one of these two videos that are right over here where like this video, I go over some things that not a whole lot of people or homeowners know about, but they really probably should. All you have to do is click on whichever one you want to watch and it'll take you directly to that video. But I hope that you found value in this video. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below and I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.